Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Has anyone listened to any television news or other account of the solid case investigating internet research investigation or a break or otherwise discuss the matter in any fashion? All right, thank you for your patience. Is everyone able to see the monitor at that angle? All right, if you have any difficulty, just, just let me know. Before we get started, I do want to introduce you to our court reporter. This is Arjuna Ray, one of two court reporters that may join us during the course of the trial. They are responsible for reporting everything that's said in the courtroom. I don't know how they do it. We are blessed here in Burlington County with two of the best uh, court reporters in the state. Um, uh, a former judge we used to have here uh, gave a speech about the court reporters, and he would talk about how during the course of the trial, all of us get to take a, uh, a little mental break every now and then to kind of just refresh ourselves. Court reporters are the only folks that aren't allowed to do that. They have to be uh, attentive uh, throughout the trial. Um, and so uh, this is Ms. Riggs, and so she's here. I have an iPad here because she provides a live feed so I can understand the testimony. Um, and so if you see me looking at the monitor, it's, uh, it's a live feed and testimony. All right. All right, with that introduction, I think we're ready to continue. Uh, and the state may call this next witness. Thank you, Your State will call Detective Sergeant Timothy Horn. Good afternoon. 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 Good
and they had cut off sewer bottles. Now you mentioned that there was an intersection. What intersection was that? The intersection uh, was Kingsley Road and Bush. Okay. Now, when you got to that location, did you observe any vehicles in the intersection? Yes. Uh, one of the vehicles I observed that was not an emergency vehicle was a green uh, Honda Civic four door, uh, green in color. And did you, um, well, let me ask you, what, what condition was the vehicle in when you arrived? Um, the vehicle was parked uh, right around the stop sign, just past it. Uh, the driver's side door was open, uh, there was a tarp over it, and the passenger side door was going to be open as well. Okay. And indicated there was a tarp over the driver's side door. Um, do you know who placed the tarp there? Yes, I was advised that the first responders uh, placed that tarp there. And what was the purpose of placing the tarp over the uh, driver's side door? There was a deceased individual uh, right outside that uh, driver's side door. Okay, and when you arrived, there were a lot of onlookers at the location? Yes, sir. Was it to prevent them from seeing the yes. deceased? Yes, sir. Now, indicated uh, that you arrived on location and part of your responsibilities was to document the scene? Yes, sir. Did you document this scene by way of photographs? Yes, I did. I want to show you what's been marked as 12 of the evidence that's going to appear on the screen here. Um, sir, do you have presence to pick in that photograph? Yes, I do, sir. What is that, sir? Uh, that's a picture of that green Honda Civic that I was speaking of. To the right there uh, is the passenger side door that's open, the window partially open. Okay. Yeah. Right at the curb. I'm sorry? Right at the curb area there. Uh, in the bush. Okay, the white line that's in the picture there, is that the stop line? Yes, sir. And is that how far over that stop line that you observed the vehicle when you arrived? Yes, sir. And there's some placards marked one, a cone, and a two, and then they continue. Yes. Do you see those? Yes, sir. Did you place those there? So the orange colored cones were placed by Pounding Town of the Department, okay. and the yellow colored cones I placed there. And okay. what was the purpose of those markers? The uh, purpose of those markers there to see uh, the yellow and the orange ones were indicate what's a uh, suspected blood trail. Uh, look, a uh, suspected blood trail went from the passenger side of that vehicle uh, diagonally across Bush and Kingsley there over up along Kingsley up to the other side. And did you continue to document the entire scene by way of photography? Yes, sir. And now, where that car is located, where would 141 Kingsley Road be in relation to that photo? In the type of photo, the figure would be received. Thank you. Uh, 141 would be this next block up here, sir. Okay. Uh, approximately how far from where that car was located? I'd say maybe not even a couple hundred feet. <laughs> She was more investigation. Ask if you recognize what's depicted in this photograph, sir. You can see this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And does that accurately depict the intersection from a different angle? Yes, it does. And is that from the driver's side of the vehicle? Yes, that picture there would be from the driver's side looking towards uh, the area 141. From across where the uh, vehicle is found. Judge, if there's no objection, the same move as on 18 and 5. That's right. No objection. Maybe both. Okay, thank you, Sergeant. Showing you this 18 in evidence. We'll have to see what the dark is on. And that's going to be worse. So I'm going to try to zoom in if I can without breaking it. Okay. Looking at that photograph, if you could just walk up. Mm -hmm. Is that the rear of that Honda that you observed in the intersection? Yes, sir. This would be the rear of the, the Honda Civic. Um, did have a U.S. Army uh, officer on the back. Um, driver's side door, uh, looking towards the intersection, uh, going towards 141. Okay, and the, the boards on the, um, the building directly in front of us to the right in that photograph? That would be what I consider an abandoned house, and I believe that's at 137, 130. And that's actually, is that actually across the intersection? Yes, that's on the other side of the intersection. There are also several orange cones in that photograph. What do those cones represent? Uh, those cones were, uh, once again, placed by the uh, Council Police Department prior to my arrival. They indicate uh, what was suspected evidence, uh, particularly ballistic style evidence, was located in this area. 
And is the tarp that was placed over the victim's body visible in that photograph? Yes, sir. The tarp would be right over here. And that's right by the driver's side door? Yes, sir. Did you also photograph the outside of 141 Kingsley that night? Yes, sir. I'll show you with the Mark S19 for identification as we characterize this photograph. Yes, I do. And what does that say? That is the front of 141 and 143 Kingsley Road. Does that how the residence appeared on the night of March 21st, 2017? Yes. There's no objection. The state would seek to move S19 at that time? Sir, I have no objection. Maybe public. You can stay in your seat, but that's uh, 141 and 143 Kingsley. 141 would be the residence to the right, sir, and then 143 would be the one to the left. Yeah, so 141 would be the uh, door with the, uh, that appears to have the interior door open? Yes. And 143 would be the one to the left? Yes, sir. Yeah, as part of uh, your documentation of the crime scene, did you then move back to the car and document around the driver's side of the vehicle? Yes, I uh, took a series of what's considered overall uh, photographs of the area where the vehicle was located. I'll show you the mark that's 20 and this 21. You can move. You sure? So there's, there's no objection moving them into evidence, sorry. Thank you. And then going forward, I'll just assume there's no objection unless I hear from you, Mr. Rodgers. Yes, so that's fair. Thank, thank you, Mr. Um, Showing you S20 in evidence now on the screen. Is that still an overall of the uh, vehicle? Yes, as a view from the rear of the vehicle looking towards uh, the area, the intersection of one point. Now, the cone that's all the way to the right here on the passenger side, is that the beginning of the blood trail? Yes, sir. Everything from these two cones directly behind the license plate and to the left onto the driver's side. What is represented by those cones? Um, well, that would be considered ballistics evidence. I don't know what you mean by ballistics evidence. Those would be what we refer to as shell casings. Um, and the tarp here is still covering the victim's body? Yes, this is prior to the arrival of the medical examiner, so all these pictures were um, taken prior to their arrival. Okay. And why do you document this in prior to the well, we like to document the scene, uh, our procedures document the scene prior to the uh, examination and the removal of the victim uh, by the medical examiner's so office. We document that scene uh, for the investigation. And do you continue to document the scene throughout different stages of the investigation? Yes, yes we did. Uh, we do it uh, prior to the removal, during the removal, and then after the removal. And I want to show you S21 in evidence. What's depicted in that photograph, sir? That would be the front of the uh, Honda Civic, which is green in color. Um, it's also shown that's their uh, news marker there, the park as well. And, uh, and again, I'm oh, sorry. Sorry, and the model that was placed also to, uh, to mark evidence. Okay, the model was actually used to mark evidence? Yes. Okay. Do you know why the model was used instead of other cones? Uh, they ran out of numbers, uh, so they used that to uh, mark a uh, piece of evidence. And the evidence that was marked by those cones in that bottle, again, is that ballistics evidence? Yes, sir. Now, you indicated uh, a few moments ago that as part of your documentation, you also uh, draw a crime scene sketch. Yes, sir. Did you do that in this case? Yes, I did. I'm going to show you what's been marked S112 in evidence. I ask if you recognize this document. Sorry, I'm placing sword marks. Yes, sir. What is that, sir? That's um, for this investigation. I produced two uh, sketches. Uh, that one's indicating uh, we can see through the upper right hand corners, brackets, cones, uh, the numbers, and the markings where they were located. At. So the numbers that are indicated here 4, 15, 1, 13, plus, those yeah. are the what? Those are the placard cone numbers. And the numbers that are immediately to the right of those numbers? That would be measurements and we utilize this. Uh, known as the baseline um, method of measuring uh, that area. So what do you mean by baseline method? So, um, for instance, if you can see where it says, if I can go down. Yeah, there's a little bit. 
we use what's called a zero point, and the zero point in this instance would have to be the curve cut out. Uh, runs along the curve of Kingsley Road. Um, run a tape measure, and I'm take a measurement off this tape measure, and then back over here, almost to be like at a count. Uh, to give us the measurement, so that's why you see these numbers. One foot 10, four foot nine, 12 foot 11, three foot, uh, to indicate where each item would have. So, so those are the distances from that baseline? Yes, sir. And you indicated there was a second sketch, and that's simply just page two of the document I just showed you, correct? Yes, sir. And that would be? Yes. If I may? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is showing you the intersection of uh, Kingsley Road and Bush Street, showing you this is the position of the vehicle, uh, and then showing you the house numbers that correspond. This vehicle uh, is observed to be in front of 133, 135 Kingsley. The abandoned house that you see is over here. And then 141, is that the house immediately adjacent to that abandoned house? Yes, sir. Okay. Is there anything else? Yes, sir. In the last picture I showed you of the vehicle, I believe it was S21, the tarp and there was a sheet still covering the victim, correct? Yes, sir. And did you continue to take photographs after that sheet and tarp were removed? Yes, sir. And after you took those photographs, uh, did you photograph the victim in the condition that it was upon uh, that, that sheet and tarp being removed? Yes, sir. I'll show you what's already been marked as 14 in evidence. Did you take that photograph, sir? Yes, sir. Does that accurately depict the condition of the victim's body that night? Yes, sir. Yes. When you observed the victim's body that night after the sheet and tarp were removed, did you observe signs of injury? Yes. What I observed uh, to the victim was uh, apparent um, gunshot wounds to the visual area. Okay. And uh, is that the immediate area of the right sheet? Yes, sir. Now, did you also observe any abnormality to the right side of the neck of the victim? Yeah, right about here. It was like a, a bulge that was would be the uh, right side of the Is that uh, visible in the, that photograph? Yes, I think. Thank you. Right over here. That bulge is what you observed that night? Yes, sir. Did you uh, subsequently attend the autopsy of Shaquille Williams? Yes, the autopsy was conducted approximately 10.30 a.m. And when you attended that autopsy, did you learn what that was causing that uh, bulge to the night? Yes, that was a uh, projectile that was causing that. Victim's body is removed. Did you continue to photograph the exterior around the car? Yes, sir. I'll show you what's the mark S22 in evidence. What's the pick of that, sir? This photo is taken after the removal of the vehicle from the scene, uh, showing the blackness in the rear of the vehicle, as well as the passenger's side door sill. S23. That show uh, the different angle. Yes, that's that's a view instead of from the rear. That's from the front of the car, looking at the uh, what's considered um, the driver's side quarter panel area, showing the placards. There's also placards um, cones, I should say. And also showing that there's a uh, cone on top of the vehicle too. Uh, I should note that uh, it was dark, but the lights were on, and we did uh, receive additional lighting from the fire department personnel. The there were street lights on in that area. Yes, sir. Uh, with those street lights, did they illuminate that area of the car? For the most part, but the additional lighting from the fire department was advantage. And you brought that in because you were uh, documenting the crime scene? Yes, sir. And S24. Uh, once again, this is the removal of the victim, uh, showing the driver's side door. It's also showing uh, what I believe was a uh, black colored baseball cap uh, in that area. And it's kind of hard to see from these pictures, but there's also uh, shell casings, or you'll see them in the vehicle. The ones that are marked by those cones? Yes, sir. Now, did you also take note of the driver's side window? Yes. Uh, in the driver's side window, uh, it's hard to see, but uh, there is a piece of trim that is missing from the window that you see on the street. 
Mm -hmm. um, that piece of trim uh, is on the street, but where that trim would be would be what's a suspected uh, projectile sir. Okay. Now, how about the window itself? What, what position was that window in when you uh, examined it? That window was down. Um, was it all the way down, or was it? I, I believe so, it was all the way down. Detective, it's hard to see on that photograph. I'm going to show you. Or on the screen, I'm going to show you the photograph up close, S24 in particular. Mm -hmm. Does that show you the condition of the window? Yes. And what's the condition of the window? It's partially down. Okay. Uh, when you say partially, is it approximately halfway down? Yes, a little bit halfway down. Almost somewhere to the, uh, the front passenger window. Okay, zooming in, it's hard to see, but does that accurately show how far down the window was? Yes, sir. And does it appear that uh, the window is down as far as this, this piece of that metallic? Yes, sir. And the, nobody rolled that window down when you arrived, correct? No, on my arrival, that, that's the way the window was. Now, during the course of your investigation, did you inspect <coughs> the interior of the vehicle? Yes. Uh, after the removal of the vehicle, uh, I'll be able to uh, look into the interior of the vehicle. Any document goes by way of photograph? Yes, sir. I'm going to show you on the screen with the mark S25 at evidence. I ask if you recognize this photograph, sir. What's the picture of that photograph, sir? That's a picture taken from the passenger side um, front area of the vehicle. I'm uh, looking into the, uh, the driver uh, area of the vehicle, and if I may, Your Honor, you see here are uh, suspected blood stains that are on the interior of the uh, front windshield. Okay. And based on your experience as a crime scene detective, were you able to determine the direction of travel of that blood splatter? Yes, that uh, that blood stain pattern is uh, consistent with it starting at the driver's seat and projecting towards the passengers, the front passenger. And you took that photograph in order to capture the, that blood stain? Yes, sir. Let me show you S26 in evidence. Okay, I'm going to zoom out again for one second. Let's pick the that uh, This is the passenger side uh, door that's open. You can see the window is partially uh, down, open. And what you're seeing here are uh, suspected blood stains uh, in this area here uh, of the vehicle. That indicates that uh, this vehicle is uh, uh, present, and uh, when the blood stains uh, projected themselves, that uh, door was closed. The door was closed. With regard to S27, let's take that photo. This is a, a picture uh, with that door being open as well. And what this is showing is uh, what you just saw, that door panels here. And this is showing what uh, we consider blood stain area right here, um, heavy in the center console, heavy here. This also indicates there's a void here that uh, suggests that there's somebody in the vehicle when this takes place. This blood thing's coming out here onto the uh, front dashboard area as well, and this is all projecting from this area here. Okay. Would that give you an indication of where the shooter was? Uh, yes, sir. And where would the shooter be based on your examination of that scene? It would appear the shooter's coming up from the driver's side of the vehicle. So you have S28 evidence. It's depicted that over there. So you might as well just stay there. No sir. I'm sorry. Uh, this is the front passenger seat of the vehicle. Yes. Um, once again, heavy saturation of suspected blood stains. Additionally, this is what I uh, suspected to be bone, and then some bullet fragments as well. And did you later collect those bone and bullet fragments? Yes, sir. And finally, S29 in evidence. So this would be the center console, the gear shift of the vehicle. Uh, it was noted uh, when I arrived, the vehicle was off, and the gear shift was in reverse. Okay. Uh, what you see here is what we consider a uh, projectile, and this is what uh, we consider a heavy cooling of suspected work. Now, when you arrived on location, was the victim still in the vehicle? No, sir. Okay, and were you advised of what uh, position he was in when 
first responders were? Yes, I was advised that the first responders, upon their arrival, they pulled the victim out and uh, attempted CPR on the victim. Was he seated straight up in the driver's seat when they arrived? The first responders advised that he was seated, uh, slumped, slumped or laying over towards the passenger side of the vehicle. And would that be consistent with the blood pooling that you observed? Yes, sir. And you also indicated there was a projectile in that photograph? Yes, sir. Where would that be? Right here, sir. And did you collect that item as well? Yes, sir. Show you what's been marked S30, S37 for identification. Starting with S30, can you identify what that item is? Yes, this is going to be uh, one projectile, uh, also known as a bullet specimen. It's collected from the center console of that vehicle there. Uh, the vehicle was uh, New Jersey Echo 30, uh, I'm sorry, E30 HPZ. Now, on that envelope that that projectile is contained in, is a series of notes. Who, who made those notes? I did, sir. And why do you do that, sir? Uh, to locate uh, my item number, the date and time where it's collected, uh, as well as the description of it and the description of where it's located. Okay. And that's what you did in this, this occasion? And that projectile was collected by you? Yes, sir. When you collect these items of evidence, do you take any steps to avoid any contamination or cross-contamination? Yes, we are. Uh, carry um, the cases of these gloves and in between each collection of uh, evidence we uh, switch out our gloves. Can you get that on this page? <coughs> yes sir. Now with regard to S thirty seven for identification, do you recognize that Yes sir. Uh, that's gonna be uh, from the picture before the uh, pieces of suspected thumb and bullet fragment that's from the front passenger seat of this vehicle. Collected those items? Yes, sir. And they're the, the same or substantially the same condition as any point? Yes, they are. Judge, if there's no objection, the state proceed to move past 30 and it's 37 to evidence. No objection, Judge. Thank you. Okay. Moving back to driver's side door. Did you observe any evidence where that molding was knocked off? Yes, sir. It was in the street uh, in between the curb and the vehicle. The molding ones? Yes, sir. Did you examine the door itself? Yes, I did. Did you notice anything about the door itself that uh, caught your attention? Yeah, the door uh, appeared to have a suspected uh, molded projectile inside the door. Uh, on the panel, next to I'm going to show you what's from our S38 in evidence. Is that projectile observed in that? Yes, sir. <laughs> it would be right here uh, in between, just to give you a reference point. Once again, this is the front driver's side of the door. This is the rear door of it, and uh, this is the bull fragment. Uh, this is what we call an overall picture. Uh, capture it before it's collected. Uh, then, Prior to collecting uh, capture, it was called scales. Actually, put measurements in this area. Does that accurately depict the driver's side window as you observed it that day? Yes, it does. Which shows it's partially up. Yes, sir. And that is how it looked upon your line. Yes, sir. Show you S39 in evidence. No objection. Thank you, Mr. Yes. This is the uh, scales I just uh, spoke about prior to showing you for uh, measurement purposes. And that's the projectile you observed? Yes, sir. And S40 evidence. Is that a close up of that projectile? That's a close up of that. Now, after you photographed that projectile, did you pry it loose or take it out of that? Yes, sir. Uh, it was collected as evidence uh, prior to the vehicle being removed from the scene. I want to show you what's been marked S41 for identification.
Just Judge, I understand the cost here. I'm familiar with all of these items, and I have no objection. Uh, if, if something pops up, I'll object, but at this point, you just have to be <coughs> along. I appreciate that, so we'll proceed in the same fashion. There are no objections. Show me how to support you in evidence. You have notes on that item? Yes, I do. And does that, those notes refresh your recollection about what that item is? Yes, they do. And what is that, sir? That is one bullet, uh, I'm sorry, one projectile slash angle specimen is located from the driver's side of that vehicle. Uh, front driver's side door, approximately six inches up. Uh, so we have okay. And you collected that item in the same fashion to prevent any contamination? Yes, sir. <coughs> I just want to show you a series of photographs, Detective, beginning with S32 in evidence. Um, did you photograph the area from the passenger side of the car? Yes, sorry. And, well, before I get to S32, I just want to back up for a minute to S31. So S31, um, show the area that you photographed on the passenger side? Yes. Um, this is showing you from the passenger side, going diagonally across Bush along Kingsley. Uh, what I described as suspected bloodstains. And we see in this picture placard number two to placard number five. Yes, sir. Does it pick up again on the curb? It picks up on, on the uh, on the sidewalk area, and then it runs up, and I believe it stops on the even number uh, side of the street in the area, let's say 142, 143, something. Is that the residence across from 141? Yes, sir. Showing you S32. Is that a continuation of that blood trial that you observed? Yes, sir. Again, that, that goes visibly to number 8. But looking at S33, is that a continuation? Yes, sir. And it's following all the way down the sidewalk? Yes, sir. S34, is that a continuation of that blood trial? Yes, sir. And who placed those placards in? I placed those placards there. S35, we have placard number 12 and 13. Is that blood trail continuing down the street? Yes, sir. And finally, S36, what's the picket map? Um, that's uh, additional placards. Um, and then I ran out of placards myself and I put these flags in. Okay. And you put the flags to mark that blood trail? Yes, sir. And did the blood trail continue on past that chain link fence? Yeah, and then shortly thereafter, I lied. couldn't find it. You couldn't see any more blood trail? Now, in addition to documenting the area around the car with cones, did you also um, document what you found by those cones and collect those items? Yes, sir. Now, you indicated you located uh, pieces of ballistic evidence. What specifically did you find by those cones? Uh, by those cones, I found uh, what were uh, what we consider shell casings. Uh, total, I recall, 13 shell casings in that area, uh, which nine were 40 caliber and which four were pre. For those uh, who are not familiar with firearms and what a shell casing is, can you describe what a shell casing is for the jury? Basically, a shell casing. Casing is what encapsulates a bullet or a projectile. Uh, encapsulates the bullet projectile, also encapsulates the gunpowder and also the ignition source of the primer is, in, um, is inside that shell case. Once the uh, weapon is fired, the projectile goes down, the barrel of the weapon, the shell casing is ejected. Okay. The shell casing is ejected from the gun and it's like a scene. Yes, sir. And you've documented by way of photograph and uh, evidence collection, those shell casings? Yes, sir. Beginning with S42, what's the picture that for uh, That's going to be the shell casings that's underneath, I believe, the black and uh, And that's going to be, if I recall, that's almost my zero point. Your zero point? Yes, with the baseline there. And just referring back to your scale here, sketch. Yes. 
what I refer to as my zero point and then the black is there. That's what the black is there. And did you subsequently collect that showcase? Oh, yes, sir. And There. Why are there two envelopes? So uh, initially, when I collect the evidence, I place it into an envelope to, like this. Uh, when the envelope is uh, and the evidence is submitted to the New Jersey State Police Laboratory for examination, they uh, remove it from the envelope I submitted in, and they place it in this envelope here. Okay. And that was located by the driver's side near the curb. Yes, sir. Showcasing located in relation to the car. I believe 1415 is going to be on the driver's side of the vehicle as well. Looking back at S22 in evidence, and I'll zoom it in for you so we get a little bit better. Right. And 14 is just to the left of that? 14 would be right here, 15 here. And you collect that item right after uh, you observed it at that location? Yes, sir. I'll show you with more S56 evidence. I ask if you recognize that item. Yes, I do. What is it, sir? I told you one shell casing has stamped spear, 40 SW, uh, placard 15 cone, uh, corresponding measures are one for the 10, four foot nine. And the two I will scan because it's the dual act. Yes, sir. And that's for every picture that we have here, or every uh, showcase. Yeah, every showcase. Yeah. The outer lab with the notes on it would be yours? Yes, sir. The larger envelope. And the smaller envelope would be the lab? Yes. I'm going to show you with Mark S44 in evidence. Uh, one, uh, it's going to be a showcase again. Just look at that area. And this right here is the showcase in which you observed this? Yes, sir. This would be the uh, showcase right here. It's fine. And after you observed it, the location is private? Yes, sir. The show is more testing this Can you describe for the jury what that item is? Yes, it's going to be uh, one shell casing, headstand, wind, W I N, 40 S W, flat with one cone. And again, the two envelopes is because of the lab? Yes, sir. And do you recall where that was located in relation to the car? Uh, number one, I am without looking at the sketch. So I'm pretty sure that's going to be the driver's side of the vehicle. Showing you S112 the sketch. Yes, uh, on my, yes. Right in this area here. So, right, even with the driver's side front wheel? Yeah, right, right in that area. Yes. I'm not the greatest girl in the world. It's, uh, there we go. Moving on to S45 in evidence. What was located in that location? Um, this location is a shell casing, but it's also um, near that piece of uh, molding that we spoke about uh, previously from the motor vehicle. 
Okay, and that piece of molding was a uh, piece of molding from the door frame? Yes, sir. And that's on the driver's side as well? Yes, sir. Did you collect both of those items? Yes, I did. And it's cone number, is that a nine? I believe mean, that's a nine, yes. And the showcase is right here next to the molding? Yes, sir. Beginning with S10, oh, I'm sorry, S59. It's 59 for identification. Do you recognize what's in that bag? Yes, I do. So what I described is one piece of uh, cardboard uh, window molding, uh, plastic number nine. Um, Could you open up that bag and uh, show the jury that, that piece of molding? Thank you. Observe that molding in that bag? Yes, it is. Does it have a defect in it that would be consistent to where that bullet is? Yes, located? this is what we would call a defect uh, from the suspected uh, projectile to the, uh, the door frame of the vehicle. I'll show you again S24 in evidence, that photograph. Does that depict in relation to where? I was saying when you're done with the exhibit, if you want, you can just put it back in the bag. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. That's one right here at this point. Number nine. And there's also a shell case that was found by number nine? Yes, sir. I'm going to show you what's the more S58 for identification, or actually, that is S58 for identification. Is that? Uh, yes, I do. What is, what is that, sir? What I described is one shell casing, head stamp, federal 40 SW, placard nine cone, 12 foot, 7 foot. 12 foot, 7 foot, 3 is the distance from that zero point that you described? Yes, sir. Okay. And did you continue to collect the shell casings that you observed to see that night? Yes, sir. Showing you what's the mark. S46 in evidence. What's the picture that It's going to be a shell case uh, in the area of placard number 10. And uh, that shell casing is in the location where you found it that night? Yes, sir. And looking back at your sketch, S112, uh, is the location of that casing noted in that sketch? Yes, that casing is going to be uh, right here in this area, uh, near where the victim is located. Yeah. That would be right next to the driver's side door? Yes, sir. And did you, in fact, collect uh, that item? Yes, sir. I'm going to show you S60 now. It's S60, do you recognize that? Yes, I know. What is it? It's going to be one shell casing, uh, stamp FC3B, the bottom, placard on the 10 cone. That's a 12 foot 8, uh, 11 foot 10. Is it more? S47 now. Is that an overall that shows several of the different um, shell casings? Yes, it does. Sir. And the one that's next to the bottom, what, what cone number is that, sir? Uh, I believe that might be. Have to see. That might be ten. I'm not sure. I have to look at my sketch. Notes. So I guess twelve. Yes, that's going to be ten. Okay. And the other casings that are around, what would be next to ten? Uh, it should be seven. Uh, it should say. Spray bottle and to the right here is three and six. Three and six. And you notated that through documentation and photographs, and then you collected those items? Yes, sir. Showing you S48. Now, look, where on the car are those two shell cases? This is what I was speaking about previously. Uh, this is the shell casing, which is underneath. 
um, right in front of the driver's side rear tire. And um, that would be at six, and number three would be uh, right in front of that. Um, I'm not sure, not too far away from it. Um, once again, underneath the driver's side of the, the car towards the rear. Okay. And you put those cases afterward? Yes, sir. Show you first S62 identification in evidence. Yeah, this is what I described as one shell casing, uh, head stamp FC380 auto, placard number three cone. Uh, it's a 17.6, And that's that casing that's right there underneath the passenger side? There's one right here. I'm sorry, driver's side. Yes. Okay. Yes, driver's side. And now S63. Yeah, uh, this item would be one shell casing head stamp Federal 40 S and W, placard number six, the cone, um, right here at 17 foot nine inches, 13 foot five inches. And again, you're taking steps with each of these projectiles to prevent any contamination. Exactly, changing my gloves each and every time uh, in between the questions. Thank you. 